All right, we're on. Good morning, everybody. This is Don Clark with FileMakerProGurus.com and FM Database Consulting. And today I'm excited to be with uh, Charles Dels of Dels Engineering up, is up in Toronto. Um, go ahead and say, say introduce yourself. Don, to Don, I noticed you said Toronto right. Instead of most people say Toronto, but we up here and we, we call it Toronto. We don't even say the T and we had a, a CH kind of sound. So. Oh, really? Oh, so yeah, I Toronto. Yeah, I guess that's our that's our uh, <laughs> our local uh, local Canadian accent. How are you today? I'm doing great. And yourself? Excellent. I'm very very well. Thanks. I'm really uh, excited actually. Um, what I wanted to do today is uh, talk about a little bit about uh, the state of, of uh, web publishing, mm -hmm. and uh, also introduce a, a new platform called FM Better Forms. Basically, what that is is a it's a shortcut, if you will, to take advantage of some really really modern technology. There's a lot of good stuff in this, by the way, everybody. I've had a chance to preview it and work with it, actually, and, and Charles has uh, done some stuff with me to make my life a little easier on one of my projects. So it's called FM Better Forms. Um, let me go ahead and put that up there so people can see it. Yeah, there and I'll just, kind of jump, yeah. I'll just kind of jump right in here. And he's going to go ahead and go into a presentation right now showing you what FM Better Forms is all about. So let me put that up on the screen here. All right, we're good to go. Uh, not quite. There you are. Now we're ready to go. Okay. So basically, uh, custom web publishing in FileMaker has been, I would say, a little bit of a challenge over the years. Uh, we originally started off with uh, IWP, and which was instant web publishing, and we also added around the same time custom web publishing, which is the ability to pull the data out directly or the raw data out of FileMaker. Um, some of the technologies, I'm not saying PHP is an older technology, but raw PHP is, is a little bit older. And there were some other platforms for publishing things as well. Um, one of the problems, I guess, or challenges was that uh, developers had to learn an entire another platform or language, as well as the, the methods for deployment, for getting the information onto the server, and, and so on. So that we always became, a, that was always a, a challenge if anybody's, uh, remembers doing those kinds of things, like using FTP, for example. All right, some of the newer technologies we have, we have uh, WebDirect, which is FileMaker's uh, instant web publishing version or modern version. PHP with frameworks, and I, and I add the with frameworks caveat because there's some really, really excellent uh, frameworks for PHP, um, Laravel being the, the dominant one there. And there's a few other methods we can we can publish some things with as well. One of the problems with all of the technologies is it requires a whole other learning curve or a whole other set of skills. And if you're dedicating most of your time to running your consulting business as well as as, uh, as developing in FileMaker, it's very very hard to to uh, squeeze in or, or push some some of the ends up getting pushed out to fit into that that, that learning curve for these other platforms. Um, today we have some really, really modern JavaScript frameworks, and those are basically our architectures, or kind of opinionated architectures, where we can design um, some front ends with. But again, there's a learning curve involved. So what BetterForms does is it kind of solves this solution by taking advantage of all of the modern technology and giving it right into the hands of the developer. Right. FM BetterForms is basically a separation of web publishing and business logic for a FileMaker developer. So traditionally, FileMaker has the view engine, the, the display, and the data model, as well as the logic, the controller part of it, are all integrated into, into one, one um, sort of monolith of FileMaker. FM Better Forms basically breaks out the view, the display part of the, the publishing, and separates all your business logic and pushes it in the back end. If you've done PHP development in the past, you know that you usually have, for the most part, probably about 90% code replication on the PHP side to, to surface your app. So that means you're having a, this duplication of code, one, one in the scripts and in the schema of FileMaker, and then the other one is in the, is in the PHP code itself, which is kind of a pain because whenever it comes time for, for updating, uh, as a lot of developers have told me, that the, the, the PHP guy has left the company and now they have this app and they're, they're kind of scrambling to, to manage things themselves and they don't want to bother to learn all the new technology. So they hire somebody for a short term, like a student or something like that, and then get their work done and then they're, they're sort of back stuck again. So what I wanted to do, Don, today is I want to show you some, some use cases 
of and, and kind of give you an idea of how a modern approach to web publishing works. Great. Looking forward to it. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a couple a couple different uh, couple different demos. This first one here is a company that has a vertical application and they have a vertical app that they have in various counties and it provides building inspection permits. So the I guess the building inspection permit has a number of kiosks or terminals I should say that the uh, the staff use. And when they they provide a permit, the permit has a short uh, smart link on it that people can type in and that takes them to this page here. So basically this allows them, this is connected to a, a um, development services, the dummy data. This can, allows them to connect, or sorry, allows the uh, various bits of information to be surfaced. Here's a vertical tab or horizontal tab, I should say, with, uh, with a data table. They can, there's a, there's a help modal here for popping up with uh, some rich text help in there with uh, images and things like that. And really, really key is they click this button. Now, this this workflow is already generated, is already existing in the FileMaker solution. This is a wrapper for, for that. And what this does is it calls an existing script, generates a PDF. The PDF gets surfaced, dumped, and now we can, now the, the client or the user can pull up that PDF. That PDF actually came from a FileMaker layout. That's not a, a that's a generate, that was generated totally in FileMaker. So that's kind of how that works. Um, in this particular case, this is a vertical solution. So Betterforms really, really excels with vertical apps because what it allows you to do is take an existing vertical app that is not multi-tenancy and you can wrap a user interface on, on the front. Traditionally, to handle multi-tenants in FileMaker, almost everybody splits off copies of the database and they, have, they just spin up another copy of the database then you end up with a deployed various versions and it becomes a little bit of a hassle to do uh, data migration and updates. When you wrap the front end of the database with a user interface and you separate the user interface from the data in behind, which is what we don't normally do in FileMaker architectural wise, then it makes it really, really easy to convert an existing solution into a multi-tenancy solution. And you don't have the problems that you're going to have with FileMaker where you have the ability to for the, the the user to if there's a bug somewhere in your software, you're going to suddenly be dumping data that they're not supposed to see. When you separate those two, you can have API endpoints in your scripts, and makes it really really easy to separate those concerns. So that's kind of uh, that's that's an example. I'm going to show you another example here. This one's a little bit more a little bit more complicated. Let me go back to my links here. Actually, I think I've got a link right here. This one here is an application and it was an application that was uh, that was developed for the University of Toronto and it's for the faculty of music their music department requires a lot of complicated um, a complicated enrollment process which which has a lot of data validations and things it's it's a little bit different than the regular academics so you can see here in this case this is a multi multi-step wizard better forms doesn't just publish forms but most data consumption and data data um, Submission workflows involve some form along the way there. So that's why we, we sort of named it that way. In this case, we have a number of different types of fields, some radio buttons. There's also a little bit of conditional logic, too. You can see if I change this, this information over, over here changes. Very similar to how you do that in FileMaker. There's some, a little bit of an animation on there. There's a different animation there. And you can see that. I'm going to go on to the next step here. And in this particular form, they the student is allowed to have multiple choices within their um, within their application. They can select up to three instruments. So this is an accordion, and within the accordion, there is some selections and some value lists that are generated in FileMaker, and a number of other things here as well. And within that, there's another accordion. So we have this n idea of nested nested forms and. That's really, really important because that's the equivalent of having like a portal layout on a, on a FileMaker, um, FileMaker layout. And the form goes on and there's a bunch of other, other things as well. It finishes with a payment gateway. And in this particular case, this is a, a data tab. Each row of these vertical tabs acts as a, a separate row of data and so on. So that's kind of, uh, those are the types of things that we can, we can generate fairly easily. What I want to do is I want to show you behind the scenes and how we, how we actually go about building these kinds of things. So I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. And 
right, we're going to go to, there we go. There. So here's an example done of a really, really simple form. Okay. And it's going to be a job application, and of course we're looking for developers. And I, I added a small caveat for the people who program outside of FileMaker. There's an exclamation point in front of the great pay and coffee, which basically means not great pay and coffee. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of like an inside joke. All right. So we have a basically first name, last name, and an email address. The browser automatically detects that and picks it up as an email field. But you can't really do too much with this form, so we want to add a little bit onto here. So I'm going to go over to the Better Forms uh, uh, admin panel, and I'm going to find my form, which is called, oops, let me go onto the right page here, and it's job application. That's it right there. Let's load that up. And... Better Forms has all of the data defined, or all of the schema of the form, that's the shape of the form, is defined through JSON. And there's a really good reason why we do that. What it does is it allows the developer in FileMaker to mutate anything. That means you can change any component on the fly. And because Better Forms is reactive, when you change something, it instantly renders on the, on the client as well. So they're kind of tied together in, uh, in certain aspects. So if we look at our form again, we got first name, last name, and email. And if we look over here, I have first name definition, last name definition, and an email definition. And there's one other thing in here. This is a little, this is a column break. Because Better Forms is responsive, that means when I change the size of the screen, you can see the fields automatically jump into different arrangements and everything realigns. So that's something, unfortunately, WebDirect doesn't do. I probably will do that at one point in time, sometime in the near future. Right? But it's really, really super important when we're using data on phones versus tablets, portrait versus tablet. Uh, yeah, especially with something like a university where you're going to have all kinds of different users on different platforms. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And in that case, the a lot of the students use tablets. They're, they're entering their, their forms on a tablet. They're not thinking twice about, I need to be on a computer to type things in properly because that's just uh, that's the, uh, the norm for them. All right, so let's add some fields on here. Maybe we want to put a little field on here, like a text area where they can submit a, a resume or something along that line. We have a little quick reference. You don't have to memorize these definitions. It's really easy to find them out. So I'm going to look for a text area, and I'm going to grab this. Better Forms has access to the clipboard, so that means you can programmatically set and pull stuff off of the clipboard, and you can do that from FileMaker. So that means a FileMaker strip can put something on the clipboard onto the browser which is really, really powerful if you, if you want to uh, set certain things. And I'm going to add that definition right in there, and that's going to be a text area. Let's just save that, and let's see what we got. Let's go back over to here and reload. And there we go. There's my text area. Perfect. It's got some default text, but we'll, we can change that. That's fine. And we need to do a little bit more here. That's not quite enough. We need to submit that. So let's look at how we're going to submit that. We're going to add a button. So I'm going to search for button. Add a number of different ones. I'm going to take this very first one, and I'm going to go just down here. I'm going to make some room. I'm going to paste that in here, and I'm going to put a comma in there. That's going to format. I'm also going to add, I'm just going to grab this page break, column break area, and stick that in there. Now, if you notice this button, there's the definition of a button that says push me. We're going to change that to apply. Apply and save, and let's go back over to here, refresh our page. And there we go, we got our button, nothing's happening. And it's not a bug, but just like FileMaker, you put a button on a layout, the button's not connected to anything. So we actually have to define, the, the button's not opinionated. In other words, it doesn't automatically do something. We define what we want it to do. So in that case, in this, or in this case, I wanted to run a script on FileMaker. So I wanted to run what's called a utility hook. So I'm gonna look for my utility hook. There it is there, and it's an action. You can see that it's an action. I'm gonna grab that onto the clipboard. And I'm going to place that, you see this in this key here, there are actions. So I'm going to place that right in there, just like that. So now it's going to run a utility hook to FileMaker, and let's try it again. We're probably not going to see anything because there's nothing in that script right now. So I'm still nothing going on. So I have a little database that this has actually been connected to, and I'm going to go into my job applications field, and it's pretty, pretty simple. Let's have a look at, this, at the, uh, the design of the database. There is just an, a UID. A name first, name last, a platform, we haven't added that field in there yet, and an email. 
And I've also added just a adjacent field so you can see what's coming in. Makes it a little easier so you can understand how everything works. So I'm going to go into a, into the script editor here. Better forms basically will put onto your clipboard a set of scaffolding scripts. These scaffolding scripts are pre-configured for the layout, if you will, the form that we're page that we're on. So that makes it really, really easy. And within that, I have one called job application, which is what this page is. And there is my on utility hook. I don't know if that's going to be too small or not. You can see that. Okay. All right. And so here's my on utility. Hook. We're going to inter interact now with the, with the client client being the browser. So I want something, at least when I click the button, I want to tell the user that, Hey, I've received your application and checks in the mail, or at least the interview, interview application time slot is. So it's pretty super, super, super simple to inter interact with the, with the front end. I'm going to do a set variable and all of the variables that we're going to interact with that are used to communicate with better forms show up in this script as globals. And the one we want is called actions. And I'm going to put an action in the actions, just like I did an action over here that said with this button that says call the script. I'm going to put an action in this side that's going to say show modal a dialog box. So let's see modal. That's what I want there. We have some custom suite of custom functions that, that help format this schema so you don't have to remember everything. I'm going to make it a success. That was is going to give a little animation, release some endorphins, make the user feel good. And I'm going to say great. Don't call us. We'll call you. Right. All right. Perfect. And we can add some other options in here too. I'm going to make this a dark background on, on a light front. And if we wanted to add extra things, we can inject other things like more actions into buttons and things like that. Like it, so you have full control over this modal. So let's save that. And there we go. So what we've done is the scripts has come in. We've added some stuff to a, a global variable and that's it. I'm going to save that. Let's go back over to here again. We shouldn't have to do anything. I should be able to hit apply here and it says, great. Don't call us. We'll call you. And that's how easy it is to interact with the interface, right? I've done virtually no coding in FileMaker, very, very little definitions on the, on this side here on the editor itself. I've done a little bit of wiring up that you didn't see. And that's just basically to specify which set of scripts I'm going to run. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much all. So let's do a little bit more now. Does that make sense so far, Don, how we're doing this? Yeah, it does. Um, anybody, I think I've mentioned that we're going to be taking questions at the end. So if you have some specific questions, save them up. And when we get to the end, you can, uh, I'll post those comments up here and then we'll respond to them. Yeah, I see. I see. We got some. Uh, we have a few there. So I, mm -hmm. there we go. Yeah. So if you have any questions, guys, yeah, by all means, just add them in there. Maybe Don can monitor those, and, and if they're applicable, that's okay. I can answer them right away too. Okay. So that's all good. We don't have to. We don't have to circle around. All right. So let's add a little bit more now. Let's do a little bit more on FileMaker side. We don't really need to change too much of our form. In fact, actually, I'm going to add one more thing here. I'm going to add. I want to add a radio button set that maybe says uh, a if they're certified in FileMaker or not. So I'm going to say radio, radio buttons. Let me grab some radio buttons and I'm going to stick the radio buttons ahead of my uh, text area right in here. And let's just do one more thing here quick. My default is, is defaulting to gender. I want to say is certified. Right, and they're going to be radio, and we're going to change these values to yes and no, to yes, no, and actually the label we're going to say R U uh, F M certified question mark. There we go. So that'll be the label. The label is what appears above the button or above the uh, the element, and that looks pretty good. Let me just save that and see how we're doing here. Maybe need to. Just things a little bit. There we go. Are you certified? Yes or no. And if you're certified, we probably want to know what level they're certified at as well. Right. I was, so this is have one more field and um, we'll make that a conditional field because you can do things like that. 
So it's going to be an input field. Let me grab that. Are you certified? Yes or no. And there we go. So, and then this time we want to say what, what, what level? What version? Actually, version, right? What version? There we go. And we're going to call this all the data from better forms. When you submit something, it comes into FileMaker as a JSON object. So even if you have things like related uh, subaccordions and data tables underneath, stuff underneath, nested data, that all comes as one giant object. And that makes it really, really easy to work with. And this is just going to set the key that that particular data point is going to be tied to. So I'm going to call it version. I'm going to call it FM version. I like lower camel case as a naming convention. So I think that's uh, the most used, most common one. And... We also probably want to hide that that version. Oh, I've got to change the typo. We'll probably want to hide that unless we say yes. So we'll, we'll add that in maybe a little bit later as, as we have time. Are you, oops, are you CER certified? I'm horrendous for typos. Anybody who's communicated with me, I apologize for now and for all the future. All right, so there we go. So now we have this nice little thing. It's, it's creating a... It's creating a hook into FileMaker. I can click the button. I know the script is running in FileMaker. We want to break that data down. So let's go back to our FileMaker script. And we're going to do something super, super, super simple, pure FileMaker here. All right? We're going to say go to layout. And the layout I'm going to go to is called applications. That's this one back here. I'm going to say new record. You see where we're going with this. And let's do a set field. Set field and the field. I'm just going to show you exactly what's coming in. So I'm going to set this bigger field that I have in the background here. And I'm going to show you exactly what comes in through um, from better forms. And everything, all the data comes in in a global called BF model. And you know what I'll do is I'm going to do this format elements. Some format elements right there. There we go. All right. And there. So what I've done is I went go to layout, new record, pasted this entire object formatted into here so we can see it. And we're going to explicitly commit because we're running, this is running on server. So we don't want to accidentally leave the record open somehow. So there we go. We should be good. Let's go back over to here and let's put some data in. First name Charles. Else. Something like that. Not exactly correct. Oh, well. All right. What version? Uh, version 16. Let's do this. And uh, my objectives actually with them to code faster. There we go. And let me hit apply. And we see it says, great. We got that. And we can see the records created in the background now. And you can see here. Let me see if I can zoom. Oops, just do this for a second. You can see here that the data all came in exactly as we'd expected. So if we wanted to break those things out and stick them into fields, it's super easy. We would just we would just do a set field and let's say set name first, and then the name first we would grab the we would do JSON get elements. JSON get element. Um, and from there, we want to grab name first. That is it. Right? Of course, I would replicate that for all of my additional fields that I need to do. And um, let me save that. I'm just going to blow up these records here. And let's go back to here. We didn't clear the form, by the way. We did. We have. We have to explicitly set the form. You can see there we go. And we set the name. So that's pretty easy, I think. I don't think it can get. In all honesty, I. I, I I don't think you can make interacting with a web interface that much easier than that. Um, that's like literally four lines of code. It can't get any more simple. Technically, you could probably combine a couple of these things, but you can't make things too much um, too 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 much uh, simpler than that. And yet, we don't lose we don't lose flexibility. And the reason we don't lose flexibility in our coding, when you simplify something in almost any kind of interface, you simplify a process, you start to add opinions into it. 
And that means if you think about iOS software, when it first came out, we didn't have cut and paste and we didn't have all these kinds of features. They really, really had it simple and they said, this is how you're going to use the device. They established us using the device and then they gave us more and more features. In this case, it's not, not exactly like that. We have very, very, very loosely coupled front end to the back end. What I mean by that is there is nothing that states in the back end that defines the front end and says you have to do something a certain way other than formatting the data. Because it's JSON in and JSON out, we have a lot of ability to, to mutate, mutate that data. Does that make sense so far? Oh, I'm following right along. I haven't had any questions yet. If anybody has any questions, Super. please uh, go ahead and put them in there. I, I think I'm really excited about this. As a developer, I'm sure most of you are developers, or, uh, what this gives you is the ability to be interface easily with an online presence and collect data and, and, and extend the capabilities of your database. Um, yeah. Even if it was just something as simple as a form that you put up there and you put it up to a subdomain like, you know, uh, uh, forms.fmprogurus.com or something like that. Different website on a different location, but it still appears to be on your website. And that form collects data. It triggers a, a script in FileMaker and you pull all that data in and it's all automatically there. That's going to make your, your uh, job a lot easier. You can develop that for your client. They're going to think you're doing magic stuff. Okay. Here's the thing, Don. This is a this is a really cool thing. So you have a client. We're all developers. We all have clients. Mm -hmm. Some of us have a few verticals. Uh, I'm assuming too, because I, I see some of the names that are on the uh, on the list, and I recognize a lot of them. And I know some of those guys have have verticals. When you have a vertical, you want to just maybe add a portal to it. Simple way that a certain type of client can access some data. Maybe a limited workflow, we'll call it. So you can start with that, which is something that may be as simple as a HR application form like this, or it may be something a little bit more complicated like that uh, university application, or maybe it's just surfacing data. Maybe it's just showing a data table of somehow. When you're a developer, on the other hand, you can go to your client and say, listen, why don't I add this ability in? Charge them whatever whatever your, your rate is, and I would charge them an ongoing support maintenance type, type agreement for that as well. Typically speaking, you can recover your cost of better forms about two or three times with the first project at least, right? And then if not, 10 to 20 times because it's relatively small compared to the amount that you can charge for the benefit to the, to the end user. Better forms is designed to be scalable. That means there's very little interaction with FileMaker itself, with your FileMaker server. The data on the back end is all cached, so that means it's not hitting any other servers really hard either. Um, the cache gets automatically cleared out uh, according to various rules and such. And the servers are scalable, so that means they scale out wide. Um, they don't need to scale. They don't need to scale to be bigger machines like FileMaker does. With certain principles, you can reduce the amount of data and the interactions with your FileMaker database, and you can scale up super to super high numbers of users because you're running a quick script that lasts maybe 50 milliseconds or 20 milliseconds or so on. And we have a built-in timer as well to measure those call times. And what that means is now your server can handle a lot more data, just like just like regular users. Let me show you a couple other things real quick too. We talked about uh, conditionals. Super easy to add a conditional. I get this thing right here. I think I just, let me just see if I just updated this. I moved this over, there we go. So it says what version I want to say if this is yes or if this is no. It's really easy to do that. You can add a conditional to almost anything. In that case, here, here it is here. What version I'm going to add a special key called visibility. Visible, sorry, visible. And if I say true and false, that'll just hide it. But I want it to be a calculation. So if you add underscore calc onto any key, it turns it into a calculation, kind of like changing the field definition in FileMaker. Oops. And... And there we go. I just lost my scrolled off there. So I basically say, what is the model? That's the data model dot. And I want to say, what is this one called? Is certified. If model dot is certified, that's the name of this key. And this is JavaScript here. It's a little bit of JavaScript. You don't really need to learn much, but if you want to do some more advanced things, that's the native language that runs in the browser. So that's pretty much what we have to use um, to have best performance. And if it equals yes, I want to say if it equals yes. So if the model is certified, that's this key, is equal to yes, then this is exactly, this looks very FileMaker-ish. 
but it's instead of hide object when, which it works on a negative, this one's on a positive, uh, on a truthiness, then it will show this. So let's save that and let's see if we got that to work. And I, okay, and if I click yes, boom, shows up. And we want to maybe, if you want to maybe just add something in there to tell the user that it's uh, animated, we could just do this, uh, fade in, in, down. There, this is a, these are just predefined predefined animation classes, and we can just do that. Let's just do this here. So this makes it a little bit more, a little bit nicer. I go with something like that. Oh, I must have missed, I must have missed the keyword there. Yeah, right there. There we go. I love it when stuff doesn't work because it makes me squint. <laughs> All right, I'm usually squinting anyway by the end of the day. Boom, you can see that. So, so it disappeared and doo, drops in. So you can do stuff like that. Right? It has a lot of flexibility. You don't have to do things like that, but there may be valid use cases. Here's a really good one. Uh, we did something for the, uh, what's it called? The visibility, vis, no, sorry, visionary bar, visibility bar, visionary bar. Now here is a better forms form. Totally doesn't look like what we're working with over here because better forms not opinionated. So that means you can control things from pretty much from head to toe within the app, within reason. In this case, we can control the CSS. And I think this one has an animation, is it? Yeah, the animation comes in, and if I, let me just fill this up quick. It also has, this one, this particular form has some validations. I don't know, some password got popped in there. Um, do, 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 Okay, and looks like I can't match my own passwords. Try this again. There we go. The passwords match, so the validation automatically gets rid of that. Um, and I hit create, and there's a blocking modal. This this particular use case was for Stephen Delinsky from FM Forms, and it sends an email. I got notifications off. You go to the email, and then let me just uh, have a quick look and see if that email came in. Do 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 right there. It is there, and confirm email address. So that takes us to a confirmation to a smart link. Better forms can read the query string, and you can see there's a little animation there, and they're done. So that's kind of that's kind of a. And if I try to reload this, yeah, there we go. So there, and that is fully responsive. You can see it jumps, and that sits on the form. When they click this button, it launches WebDirect in FileMaker. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to check to see what you guys have any questions coming up so far. And I don't, I don't think I see any in there. Not yet, no. Don, did you have any questions so far from anything? Uh, no, I, I'm just really impressed with how this thing works so quickly. You might want to go into a little detail about what's on the back end in terms of, uh, you know, the servers you talk about and that kind of stuff. Setting those sure, servers. sure, yeah, yeah. Okay, but um, just before I do that, I just want to mention something here. This user interface that I've been working on, this whole thing, 100% built in better forms. So it's not just about forms. I built this is an entire application, and in fact, a whole vertical product that is purely built in better forms. There is no, there is a, it has a FileMaker database, but there is no user interface on that database. It's just a bunch of tables and a bunch of scripts. So it has all of the data model there and all the controller scripts there, and then the user interface is here. So it makes it really, really, really simple to to actually to build things. Because when I do something like go to this page for sites. Incidentally, this spinner here, you can customize that. Right? You can put your own animated one in there. So if you have a client that has a certain logo, you can have an animated, their, their logo animated. But when I do this, when I go to my sites here, what it's doing is it's doing a call to, call to the, doing a hook script call, and it's doing a search based on the user ID. So it's passing in this user ID, and it just returns the data. So there's very little chance, or almost, I want to say no chance, but... Uh, from an engineering background, you never make absolutes. But there's ex extremely improbable that it's going to return wrong data. And the reason for that is it's super simple code. It's doing a very, very simple SQL, execute SQL, and it's finding something based on an ID. If the ID doesn't even get passed in, it automatically aborts. And that's it. So it's very, very hard for a multi-tenant application to, to see the wrong files here. In fact, you'd have to kind of work at doing that. So as far as uh, you mentioned about servers and things like that, um, Better Forms is, is deployed in both North America and Europe.
for our European uh, friends. And we have local caching in both regions for data. When you hit the Better Forms European server, for example, your data doesn't actually come into North America. It hits that server and then it goes back out to your FileMaker server. You configure FileMaker servers on the fly. You can add them in through a, a server's option here. And for example, I have a number of servers, servers set up here. <coughs> Excuse me. And I can, I can hit any of those servers if I want. And it's very, very simple to, uh, to, to remap a given set of form or, or application or workflow to a, a specific server and then from that server to a very specific file within that server. Debugging is reasonably easy. It's pretty easy. We include a helper file, which is basically like an inbox type file that all the data comes and hits that first. So that means because this is running on server, the, the scripts themselves are running on server. When they run, you can't, you can't directly see what's happening. You can't set globals because that's a whole different environment and so on. So what we do is by having this inbox, we can see the data that's coming in from better form. So let's say I filled out an entire form like, like we have here. I can see what's going on and then from there I can step through my script to see what's happening in my script to see where, where I've, I've coded maybe a bug or something like that. We can pre-populate. Pre-populating data is super easy as well. It's literally as easy as setting so like right in here in this script here, we did something. We uh, we pulled data out of the data model. Uh, where is it? BF model. But if I go to my on form request, I can set data. So if I want to do set variable here, and I'm going to set the data model, which all the data is in this for the form is in here. There's other ones uh, predefined as well, and I want to see JSON set, and we are going to set, this is already empty, but it's good practice to, to just mutate it rather than cheat, rather than do something, and I'm going to say name first, and I'm going to give it name of Don, and it's JSON string, this is always good to type, you don't have to, but I pretty much always do. And like that is it. That's going to set that up. Now it's not going to work right away until we do one more thing. We've got to tell the form to call that script. So let's go back to our form. And it's demo job application under the integration tab. Enable on form request hook. That's going to turn that on. Save. And hopefully we didn't make any typos. Let me reload this page. And you can see there it is. Well, we just put that data in there. Now, I know the, in this case, I'm not, this, this page, uh, I'm logged in as, under my account, but normally I'd have the, no authentication on this page. So we would know who the, um, we may know who the user is, or you may not know who the user is, and then you could, you could, uh, pop pre-populate certain pieces of information. And that's how some of those examples that I, uh, that I showed you uh, work as well. All right. I'm going to go back just to a couple other things. I'll give you a couple other quick tour. How are we doing for time uh, so far, Don? We're at about 38 minutes or so. We're doing okay, okay. So, near the end. All righty. So um, there's a few other things. Right now, Better Forms is in a developer VIP preview, which basically means that you can produce stuff. It's in production. But the caveat is, it's not really a caveat, is we're limiting the amount of enrollments because we're doing a lot of uh, training. Better Forms is a platform, it's a framework, it's not just a simple program that you just use, or it's not a plug-in, or it's not just a simple tool, it's an entire development environment. And there's a big difference to that. That means there has a little bit more depth to it. Just like FileMaker is a developer environment, this is a developer environment for front-end web, web uh, publishing. So as we develop our documentation, and we have a whole repository of a Gitbook of various bits of documentation and things like that, and as we develop that type of stuff, then we can start to onboard people faster. Right now, the main concern is we want to make sure that we get the user experience right. And as a developer and principal developer of the application, I'm very close. And you guys know that you know anything that you develop, you don't see the bugs. The first person who uses it sits down and they see bugs like like night and day compared to you. So. The back end, the under the actual framework itself, better forms. There's really two components here. 
there's the user interface, which is built out of better forms, the application, and then there's the framework, which is the actual code that it runs on. And that's already in production, fairly stable, and we don't really have very many problems at all with that. But the front end user interface, this is relatively new. This is only a few months new, so or a few months old. And uh, that means that we want to get more people using that because getting the UI just right and so that people can make assumptions about things is really, really key. So that's why we're onboarding people in, in um, lots of 10. We're on our, on our uh, second batch right now, and we're about halfway through that. Cost for uh, the VIP preview is... Basically, you get a, 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 premium, a premium option, which allows you to develop and have unlimited set, sorry, sites and unlimited forms, but they do not include a vertical reseller application. So in other words, if you were to build a, um, or if you have a client that has a vertical, then that's one license just for that. Otherwise, if you have a client that's building something and you're doing things for your clients that's ancillary to their main application, and they're not selling their software, their application as software they're using it um, for their business, then there's uh, unlimited use use for that. It's only four ninety nine right now. So it's a really, really great deal. That's about 60% off of the final price, which will be uh, released in about a couple weeks, just after that. And is that, that's their permanent price going forward? Yes, okay. that's right. So that'll be, that's an annual price and they'll stay at that price. Okay. Yeah. So that this, if you're going to be using this kind of service, now is the time to get in uh, before Absolutely. the price goes up. So. And the, the support is, is uh, really good, too. Um, you know, we have a number of people on board. I try to spend at least a couple hours with them uh, just, just onboarding, walking through. And what we do, what we've been doing, Don, is kind of, it's actually been really, really neat, is we've been saying, hey, what's your, what's your use case? Show me one of your customers, and let's build something. Oh. Because almost everybody has a customer that says, well, my customer needs, a, needs to be able to surface this or submit this data for these meter readings or something like that. So we start building it, and usually in a couple hours, we get it about halfway done. We get the all the parts wired up, and then they have to add some more fields and maybe change the descriptions and things like that. Yeah. So we get pretty far on that, and that really gives that's a hands-on type of thing. And I think most developers gravitate to that, like the hands-on learning. You know, they get the idea, show me how you do it, and I can cut and paste to make the changes. On top of that, they end up with some money they can build to their clients and yeah, right away. recover the cost of that, the their goal. purchase. And, get, and then keep going from that point. So that's not a bad deal at all. Does anybody have any questions out there? We're about to draw it's, to a close here, I think. It's probably going to take a few seconds. I noticed there's a, a lag between us and, and the uh, yeah, we and the play version. It, it, so. Yeah, that's the way it works. Um, so we'll give it a few seconds. Yeah, so if somebody has something, it takes a few seconds. I mean, we'll give it a couple, another couple of minutes here. Uh, in the meantime, I'll let you know that I'm going to be uh, posting this up to YouTube, to the FM Pro Guru's uh, YouTube channel, um, this video. Um, I'm saving it here and posting it. Uh, and I'll have a, a probably a little uh, a, a web post on FileMakerProGurus.com uh, probably tomorrow, maybe Monday, um, about this. So uh, but we've really had a good time putting this together. Charles and I have been working together for a couple of years now. Uh, we did uh, NAACP of, of uh, uh, yeah, which is kind of a neat project. That was a lot of fun. So here's the thing, Don. Like you know, this is one of the reasons why Better Forms came about. I was always working in these PHP environments, and Better Forms is not PHP. It's a Node.js background with uh, JavaScript in the front. Um, but every time I work in these environments, I'm pretty much starting from scratch. Like the NAACP. One, which is a beautiful website. When we, when we were finished, it, it had like a Netflix kind of feel. And I was, um, I was uh, uh, always kind of having to start start developing things right from the beginning every time. So if we ever had to go back to that, I would do the whole thing in better forms, and it would make life so much easier because we can theme it any way we want. You can have customized CSS all the way through. Yeah, and, they really wanted uh, a high, you know, great looking website. You know, the whole interface. Yeah, for and we, well, we could have, and we could make all those changes because in, with that particular client, it, we would develop something, and, and, and you guys probably know this. You, you develop something, and then and then they, you think it's pretty much right, and then they come back and they, it's, it's totally wrong. And even if you had screenshots and, and uh, not screenshots, but mockups and things like that, and then they say it's, it's quite a bit different, they're not happy, and so on. Mm -hmm. So we could integrate those changes or go through those change iterations so much quicker now. 
Yeah, and that's, that's really made that isn't? project much much easier. So that it was that was the kind of the forming of the idea for you when that happened. It was, and um, yeah. I'm also involved in a vertical, and the vertical is for the film industry. And if anybody's done any work in the film industry, you know that they have exceptionally strict security requirements oh, yeah. because everybody wants to know who the uh, who the next superhero is going to be. You know, is it going to be Batman beating this guy, or, or what's going to be happening? And they like all of that uh, that that gossip. So, getting having scripts getting lost or information being leaked or not being able to be tracked is a real concern. So, we developed the application in FileMaker, and it was developed in, as a multi-tenancy tenant application in FileMaker. Okay. But it's still a challenge because even if you're using this, say, on a tablet with FileMaker, and you're holding the tablet in your hand. FileMaker works, FileMaker security, for the most part, unless you use record level access, which almost nobody does because it's so hard to use. Mm -hmm. um, it's incred incredibly powerful if you can, I think if we, maybe if we could stick some custom functions in there to pull out all the information, I think we can make it work really well. But for the most part, very, very few developers use it. But, so FileMaker works on a, on a holdback kind of method. It gives you everything. And then you have, it's up to you, the developer, to say, uh, don't show these records, don't show those records, don't show this. Mm -hmm. So if something crashes on your iPad, and not crashes, but if you have a bug in your program that takes you to a related record that's not spoke, not there, or a layout that's not there, or something like that, suddenly you're exposing all of the data. Mm -hmm. That data is accessible from the iPad. When you separate the user interface, like the way Be Better Forms does, right. it's impossible for that to happen, right. because... I have a script on the back end, just like that on utility script, or sorry, the on form request script that we talked about. And that script is called, and it supplies data. It supplies data, and that's the only place in the application that supplies data. In FileMaker, everything can supply data. Every layout can supply data. Every layout that's related to something else can, mm -hmm. in theory, can supply data from somewhere else in the application. Right. Where now, I know exactly who the user is. They're authenticated. We didn't really talk about authentication methods, but BetterForms has that built in. And based on the user, I can surface only the data, and I only return the records that that user owns, and that's it. Right. So there's never that doubt, and that's why it's really, really good for retrofitting an existing vertical application, and suddenly now you make it multi-tenancy because you add some user IDs or owner IDs, we'll call them, and from there... Um, that person logged in and you had a couple endpoints, some a couple API scripts for fetching and retrieving the data right. and you're you're almost done. So yeah. Well all right, I think that's that's it for now. Um, nobody's asked any questions so far. Uh, let me put up a little bit of information on the screen here. Um, so you guys can see how you can get a hold of Charles if you want to. Um, there you go. It'll show up in a few seconds. Um, Actually, if it's there already, it'll show up in our thing here in a few seconds. We're watching this, too, to make sure everything's going okay, and it seems to be. So, um, there you go. Thanks very much for attending today. I sure appreciate it. And I know Charles Don, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And I'm glad we could get this out there. Uh, Charles is going to be also at DevCon 2018. I'm going to be there. Okay. Uh, have, do you have any kind of thing set up for doing any training? Actually, yet? no, because, uh, because we just hit beta. Yeah. Two months ago, mm -hmm. so I, at that time it was already getting kind of kind of late. So it would be a rush to 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 hit DevCon with a booth, right. um, and they're not having the uh, unconference sessions this year. Oh, they're not. But, okay. No, unfortunately they're not. Right. But I have lots of available times to so just grab me or send me a tweet on Twitter. I'm at, at Mr. Delfs M R D E L F S, and or you can email at the link that's on the screen there. And uh, we'll set some time up and we can sit and walk through things. All righty. Well, that's it for today. Thanks very much, everybody. And we'll see you on the next broadcast whenever that happens to come down the line. Take care. Great. Thanks for turning out, guys. Okay. Cheers.